Over the past couple of years, state fair funding has gone down. Would you, as governor, support the state fair and assure its sustainability? And that goes to you first, Mr. Dugard. Well, everybody loves the state fair. I love the state fair, and I came here as a child. I was in the Logan Patrol 4-H Club in Minnehaha County, and, and I remember coming to the state fair with uh, our 4-H exhibits. Uh, my sister brought one of her purple ribbon dairy cows here, and we showed it and got a purple ribbon here. And, and the state fair is a 125-year tradition uh, in South Dakota. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing that we have here. Like most of us, the state fair would like to be self-reliant. In South Dakota, we don't like to have our hand out. We don't like to rely upon other people. We want to take care of ourselves. The state fair is no different. Now, the state fair has had a subsidy from the state legislature, or, or a contribution, if you want to call it that. In some years, it's been as high as $1.2 million. In recent years, it's been more around the 700000 Last year, it was down to four hundred, and now this year, $300,000. Uh, in some years, the state fair has made money with that. In some years, it's lost money with that. But the trend is good. The fair is doing better and better and better. They're finding what times of the year are good, what times of the year are not so good, uh, which days, how many days. I think uh, one thing about being dependent is you tend to become less resilient. And to make the state fair entirely dependent on a large subsidy encourage or discourages the fair from becoming self-reliant. That's what we all want. I wish I could promise with our budget situation that the state fair will be held harmless. I think everything has to be on the table when we balance the budget. Uh, we are facing a budget challenge this year and the state fair may have to play a part. Uh, I'm not in favor certainly of eliminating the state support to the state fair, uh, but can I promise that we will give it, give it the same uh, funding levels as it got last year or this year? I can't make that promise. I have to deal with the the hand that's dealt, and uh, when we come together on the budget next January, if I'm fortunate enough to be governor, I'll certainly uh, want to help the state fair because I love the fair. Same question, Mr. Heideprim. Uh, what about uh, supporting the state fair and assuring its sustain its sustainability? You know, it might be uh, a result of my roots. Uh, being from Miller, but but this isn't a cost. This is an investment. This is something yes. that South Dakota treasures. And it really it really drives me crazy to hear the lieutenant governor talk like a fiscal conservative, and how he's just not sure if next year's budget's going to permit investing in the state fair. This is the administration that has not one but two governor's mansions, one in the Black Hills that they spent two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars to fix the plumbing, and the state fair gets a grand total of $300,000. That, to me, is an administration whose priorities are upside down. We need to think less about the personal comfort of the governor or the lieutenant governor and more about a jewel like the South Dakota State Fair. Yes. Oh. Yeah. 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 Dennis Dugard, two minutes for well, I'm just I'm not sure I heard the answer. I heard some misdirection. I heard some talk about other what topics. I don't answer? think I heard the answer. What was your I will, answer? Uh, I will address something about being a fiscal conservative. Uh, when Linda and I built our house across the yard from my parents, we didn't do what we couldn't afford. When we moved across the yard, we didn't have we didn't have enough money to put a stove in the kitchen. We had a place for it but we cooked out of our microwave for two years. We didn't have enough money for hardwood floors in our kitchen the way we wanted them, so we used some old softwood pine boards, and that's what we used for several years till we could afford We didn't have ceramic tile in the bathroom because we couldn't afford it, so we put the toilet on the plywood subfloor, and that's what we used for a couple years. Now, we have all those things now because we waited until we could afford them. Now, my opponent claims to be a fiscal conservative in his ads, but I invite you to go to the debate on last year's budget, not the budget for fiscal year 11, but the budget for fiscal year 10, 
and listen to my opponent argue against a vote on the bill because it didn't spend enough. This is the same man whose firm is suing the state on behalf of the school districts to get $100 million more spending. This is the same man who wanted to invade the principle of our trust funds so we could spend more. Now I've heard of a leopard changing spots, but this is a chameleon. Thank you. Thank you for bringing up one of my favorite subjects, which is my willingness to invest in education. You know, go to Dennis Dugard's economic development website, and he talks about how education is the most important thing in economic development. That's funny, because they're against increasing any funding for education, now for limiting the growth at schools, and for increasing the size of the bureaucracy, which to me is, uh, is a set of priorities that is completely upside down. But let's go back to his fiscal conservatism. You know, when it's his money, he's really careful about using software. Yeah. When it's your money, he redoes the toilet in the governor's second mansion. Yeah. Now that, to me, is a set of priorities that's upside down. Yeah.